Welcome to Imagination TV. My name is Angel Carney and what makes me who I am is my passion for art and my motivation and goal to really delve into my culture and try and discover all my all the lost knowledge and everything throughout my family. Um, today we're exploring making space. Art can be a vehicle for purpose, whether it's self-expression, representation, spreading awareness or communicating a story. The Making Space initiative is to connect and build relationships with our young artists and established art scene. On August 11th, on Hoodie Day, we are launching and make we are launching the Making Space campaign featuring Maddie Williams' story. This year, we're calling for everyone to make space any way they can to help our young artists like Maddie kickstart the careers and inspire other young artists to take the stage. Now it's time to kick off into our panel. Today we have April and Cooper and we also got Georgia. So let's begin with April. Who are you and what is your involvement with AIM? Thanks, Angel. Hi, my name is April Phillips. I'm a proud Wiradjuri Scottish woman and I'm joining you here from the National Portrait Gallery on the lands of the Ngunnawal and Nyambri peoples here in Canberra. So I'm an educator in residence and creative learning producer for Big Art. And I am a long-term friend of AIM. I love working with young people and being a part of conversations like this around making space. Fantastic. So glad to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Um, so let's move on to Cooper. How are you? Um, same question. Who are you? And what is your involvement with AIM, Cooper? Oh, hi. My name's Cooper Barnes. Um, I, I've only been involved in AIM when they come to my school and um, when we recently when we've done the design of the hoodie. Um, I'm a proud Yawun boy and I think that's all I can say. Cool, thank you so much. Um, it's good to have you on the show. How about you, Georgia? Who are you and what is your involvement with AIM? Hi, thanks, Angel. My name's Georgia Elliott. I'm currently living on beautiful Gamanga land, which is Coffs Harbour. I've been a part of AIM for about nine years now, and I started off as a mentee who was unsure of herself, and now I've just become president of the SEU program here in Coffs. So it's a really exciting experience. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you for being in the show. Um, let's move on to a few more questions. Let's go, let's ask a quite a philosophical question. What is the purpose of art? Let's start with, um, let's go back to you, April. Wow, I think the purpose of art is for me around our identity. It's around our stories. And I think it's taking that identity and those stories into a space where we can show and share them to wide audiences so that we can all kind of like enjoy those stories, I guess. So I think that art, visual arts for me is one of my biggest passions, both as an artist and an educator. And I think without it, I would say, are we even human? Yeah, that's exactly right. Fantastic. Um, I see that you're standing, I believe is a green screen, like a virtual, um, what's it called, a virtual exhibition. Uh, would you want to talk more about that? Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm here in Canberra. So I'm at the National Portrait Gallery and I'm in a studio. So part of what I'm doing here is lots of virtual excursions. So streaming live into classrooms, 
across Australia and we've been celebrating NAIDOC and Heal Country and kind of like thinking about how portraiture of First Nations peoples relate to the theme of Heal Country. So it's been really super exciting. That sounds very cool, very exciting. It's glad to see that we're using utilising technology now to really enhance art and everything, you know. It's so cool seeing that green screen and that exhibition and everything. It's so cool. It's um, cool. <laughs> um, how about you, Georgia? What do you believe is the purpose of art? Um, well, April had some really good points in there and I completely agree with her. But to me, I definitely like find it it's a way to help build relationships with people and not even just face to face you can do it with people all over the world show them a piece of art that has the history of Aboriginal Australia and you're teaching millions about that history of Australia there's not only like people in Australia learning about a history they might not know about but also people who aren't as lucky to live in this country <laughs> um, overseas so it's definitely a way of communicating and building relationships with other people yeah that's right that's right I think what you said there about the history and everything it's I think a world without art is a world without history and identity and culture and knowledge you know um okay let's move on to Cooper uh, let's ask a different question um I know that you, I know that one of your values is art. Um, can you tell us about something, sorry, can you tell us about a time that you've been influenced by art? Um, I think it was when um, the school brought in an Aboriginal artist um, by the name of Darren Dunn. Um, we, we were in a workshop and he showed us how to paint and taught us different techniques. I think that really inspired me and influenced me on art. That, yeah, that's fantastic. It's so good to be inspired by elders and everything. Um, right. We'll go one more question. Let's go with, go back to you, April. Um, what inspired you to get involved with art and be a part of the whole, like, National Portrait Gallery? Great question, Angel. I think that what really inspired me to be part of art was just that kind of like urge to pick up a pencil and draw and how happy it made me. And I think now reflecting back to when I first started making art when I was a young person, it was really such a big part of my healing and my growth as a person. And it was a way of me to kind of explore who I am as a person, but trying to understand the world that we live in as well. And I think that being here at the National Portrait Gallery is such a, a pleasure and an honour for me to be the kind of guest star educator in residence because I get to look at artworks and portraits and I get to kind of think about how I can talk about them. So it's a really nice way of of showing and sharing art. And that's what's cool about education is you can take an artwork that exists and think about the way that you could kind of tell that story and get young people to think about it. So this artwork I have next to me is by Jaranyanu David Downs and it's a self portrait. So I've been talking to a lot of young people about how we all know ourselves really well, even if it's a process of getting to know ourselves. So self-portraiture is a really super powerful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when we, um, as our culture is a very, we tell stories and um, we tell them through like, like creativity. We're, very, we're a very creative um, based culture. We do it through storytelling and painting, body art, dancing, singing, all sorts of ways. So it's really nice to see Indigenous people now still create those things and still create these stories and sell portraits through our art making practices. Um, hmm. Keeping culture strong. I'd love strong. to jump in. Yeah, I'd love to jump in really quickly, April. 
and ask a bit more about the artwork that you've got in the gallery at the moment. Could you tell us about the artists that are on and what their works mean? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, this is John Yanu David Downs, and this is a self-portrait, and he's a Wankanjunga Walamajari man, and he is sort of showing and sharing himself uh, dancing at Breen Festival, and we can see that he's like really proud in this moment. I feel like his pose and his expression is like he's just totally being his best self. And what's so cool about this dance is it's really responding to country. It's responding to the natural world, our environment, and how we're all like so connected to it. So we know that like when the rain falls, we have abundance. So we have all of that like cool stuff that grows, some of it we can eat, some of it's medicine. And that's what this work is really celebrating, not just who he is as a strong amazing man and dancer, a visual artist because he created this work, but also his connection to country and acknowledging and celebrating all of the resources that it gives us. That is so beautiful. <laughs> Such a lovely explanation. Thank you so much for that, April. So super welcome. <laughs> um, now, if we want to move on, to a artist challenge, the 120 second challenge. So with this, art can change the world. It can make change in grand infinite ways, but one of the most magic ways art can create, create change is change in the human beings viewing the art. <laughs> art can make you happy, sad, scared, excited, and can literally change the makeup of a human being by pumping the blood in different ways in their body. Art is magic. So in 120 seconds, your challenge is to draw something that might evoke an emotion in, fellow, in a fellow human being, no rules, you're the artist, make art. Except there's one rule, you actually only have 120 seconds. So if we have our paper and pen ready, let's start the timer. Thirty seconds in, Georgia. How are you going? What do you think? What's your process like? Um, I'm definitely drawing inspirations from places I've been recently. I just hope I'm doing it quick and well. <laughs> <laughs> well it's good. not going to make any sense when you first look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Art can be whatever you want it to be. How about you, Cooper? How has your art? making going what do you think you're doing <laughs> um so i'm just drawing a um a sunrise and it um it shows the the happiness and um joy of somebody coming over their i guess anger their sadness and showing through all, all of that beautiful thank you so much um about 30 seconds left april what do you what's your art making process 30 seconds left <laughs> i'm having so much fun drawing in the gallery today so i've drawn myself it's a self-portrait because i know me pretty well and this is my little daughter so it's about the love between mother and, and daughter and yeah i can tell you it's pretty solid that love absolutely that is so cute thank you so much all right that's it. Time is up. Um, not quite sure where to go from here. You kind of already explained what you were doing. Um, all beautiful, very nice. Story. I will happily, I'll happily jump in for you, Angel. I'd love just to do another quick whip around. Um, Cooper, when you create art, what inspires you to do that? Um. Most of the time, it just sort of, it comes along as I'm painting. Um, other times I go in there with a plan and I really know what I'm talking, like what I'm trying to um, create. Um, 
I think it most of it sort of comes along the way as I'm as I'm painting and the story just sort of unfolds from there. And I know recently Dapto High School have done a hoodie with AIM which features some artwork on it. Um, tell me about that experience and what it was like being able to create this new AIM hoodie that we're about to release. Um, I, I enjoyed designing it, um, coming up with the idea. Um, I sort of got given the, the heads up on the, the last few days, so I sort of whipped it up pretty quick. And it was just a story I've been taught from a, um, a young age and um, a story I'm sure most people know. It's about the rainbow serpent. And, um, yeah. Very cool. And how does it feel to have that on a piece of clothing that's going to be sold on our own website? Uh, I'm very proud. It's, yeah, it's a proud moment. It's, it's cool. So awesome to hear. Georgia, tell me about, uh, did, I, did I hear there's been a mural that was recently painted for a school in Coffs Harbour? Not actually sure. I've done, like, I, so this was a few years ago, but I, um, when I was graduating year 12, I started a year-long project on a um, Aboriginal timeline of Australia that was completely from the view of um, the Aboriginals, basically. So it didn't involve anything that had, like, British colonial aspects to it. So it was a mixed media, three metres long, and there were two parts to it. So there was the big timeline, which was about three metres and then underneath, there were four other photos of um, freehand I had made. Um, so the piece was called An, An Extinction of a Peoples and <laughs> a Place. So what I was kind of drawing on was how when British colonialism came to Australia, a lot of things changed a lot of things were different for Aboriginal Australia and also for Australian Aboriginal animals that were like really important. So I wanted to draw aspects of, yes, these animals are going extinct, but also the people, because I found in a lot of the history books that I read, they don't really draw the connections, but I was all throughout school. So I wanted to make that context really clear that with these people going out of like touch, also animals were going extinct or becoming critically endangered because they weren't being cared for like they were meant to be. So I knew what I wanted to do and I started it and a year later after <laughs> sprinkling dirt, marbling all the paint, spray painting, I finally managed to get there. <laughs> That's awesome. And what inspires you to want to create, to share stories and to be able to, yeah, I suppose, I suppose speak and tell and show truth? Well, I, I always noticed that when I was trying to learn history, there weren't too many people like that knew the full history that weren't Aboriginal and my friends were constantly asking me, like, oh, what's the story behind this place? What's this place mean? Where can I go? Where can I not go? And there was an instant at one time where I was forced to go into a place that I wasn't allowed to go to. So that really affected me and my friend who was also Aboriginal, um, who is Aboriginal. And I just wanted to help, like, start an education where more people were aware of the full history rather than just the British side, which was a lot of our history books, to be honest, um, especially during school when we're learning about colonialism. <laughs> they were just focusing more on, yes, the British invaded Australia, but what were the Aboriginals doing at that time? And I didn't know, so I started researching and was like, yeah, I want to do this. <laughs> 
that's awesome. I love that. And I think it's so important that, you know, we as Indigenous people are able to discover, you know, the truth of what has happened and then to be able to educate other people. So massive props to you for doing that, for sharing that knowledge. Now, Angel, I've heard from a little birdie in the chat line that you're also an avid artist. Tell me about, yeah, what kind of art you do, how it inspires you and what's the most recent piece of art you've worked on? Yeah, so um, I'm doing visual arts um, in school and my body of work is um, a weaving piece. So basically it talks about... um, the knowledge and cultural identity with the Indigenous women in my family. Um, and each weaving piece is a, represents um, each, each person. Um, so it starts with my granny Margaret, because she was the one who had the most knowledge, the most culture and everything. Um, and unfortunately, she had passed away with all that knowledge because no one in the family, like from my nan Denise and everything, we didn't really want didn't really want to learn all of that. We we're more, I guess, scared of the um, white society of judging us. So we didn't want, we didn't really want to learn our culture and we didn't really, we kind of pushed away our identity. Um, so yeah, each piece has a red center to show our relation with, um, with, that, with each other. And um, each one has beads in it, incorporated in it to, that's to honour one of the elders, Annie Lindy Lawler, because she was actually the one who taught me how to weave um, last year. I'm the only one in my family who now knows how to weave. So I wanted to honour Annie Lindy for teaching me that skill by putting beads into my um, into my pieces because I was this student who put beads into her into my basket with Annie Lindy. No one else <laughs> wanted to. Um, but, yeah, so my with my art process and doing these weaving pieces it really has allowed me to um just really delve into my culture and discover rediscover um all of this knowledge and kind of unlock my identity as a aboriginal woman because all of that I never learned all of that it was like I think two years ago I didn't know what my title was um all I knew for majority of my life was that I was aboriginal and I was part of the waddy waddy mob nothing else So doing this has really helped me gain a lot of knowledge and gain a lot of um, identity with my culture. But yeah, it's such an honor to be able to given the opportunity to even learn how to weave and to be able to hopefully teach other people and to share my stories like this. It's such like a great opportunity to do all of this. (laughs) Well, it's been so great. Yeah. Listening to you speak today, Angel, and to hear your story and to see you lead on this stage is absolutely amazing what is one piece of advice you'd give to someone who doesn't think they're an artist or you know doesn't know how to express what art means to them what's yeah what's some advice you'd give well art in general is anything that you want it to be it could be writing it could be making movies it could be weaving or painting or drawing whatever you think art is then do it if I think if someone for someone who's struggling with trying to express themselves through art um I guess it just comes down to what you're most comfortable with when expressing yourself are you comfortable with um public speaking are you comfortable with making movies or writing or anything whatever it is do it and you master that skill because once you develop that skill you can get um you get better at it and yeah like (laughs) um you just get better at it and you just, it allows you to really express who you are as an individual, as a person and really create an identity for yourself. Definitely. I love that. And I can, I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to frame that better. You know, art is about creating an identity for yourself. April, what does art mean to you? Well, I'm just listening to Angel and I just want to echo this idea of like showing up and putting in the hard work with art. And part of that is about, you know, visiting galleries like the National Portrait Gallery or whatever galleries near you, checking out websites. But as you say, Angel, like part of it's about just like getting that technique down as well. And just, yeah, showing up, putting in that hard work and knowing that all those like failures along the way will lead you 
to those final works that you're going to be really super proud of. Thank you, April. Cooper, what does imagination mean to you when yeah. it comes to creating art and being able to tell stories? Uh, I believe it's, it's personal for um, a lot of people. When you're expressing art, it, it shows who you are, shows the story you're trying to tell. Um, it's pretty important when you're coming down to making a story in, the, in, in your painting or in your art and it describes it, tells a story. And Georgia, are there any final thoughts on art and imagination and how they connect? Oh, it definitely. Like you need, they coincide very neatly. Like you can't really have imagination without art. You can't have art without imagination. And yeah, so they're very important to each other. And the great thing about your imagination and your art is that it's you like it doesn't matter if it's a few lines on a piece of paper that is still wholly and uniquely you like you can't draw a line exactly like someone else like you draw a straight line there might be a little squiggle somewhere in it and someone else might still have a squiggle but it might be at the other end of the spectrum so either way everything is uniquely you I love that. Everything is uniquely you and you can't create art how someone else creates art. Thank you all so much for letting me jump on this call and see behind the scenes of what happens with Imagination TV and get to know you all. Angel, you've been an absolutely incredible host, so I'm going to throw it back to you. Thanks for letting me jump in and I'm feeling super inspired by hearing all of your stories today. And, yeah, I hope you all continue to create art, continue to use your imagination and Hopefully we can be connected in the future and we can keep these kinds of great things from happening. To keep happening. Over to you, Angel. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rita. That's such a beautiful, um, such beautiful words and everything. Thank you so much for having your part in this. Um, I just want to ask one more question. Um, we'll go around again. Let's start with um, Cooper. So if you were to curate or create an art show, what would you want to see in that and why? I think we might be having technical difficulties. Yeah, okay. So we're having technical difficulties right now. So um, we'll move on to Georgia. If you want to talk about, um, if you were to create an art show, what would you want to see in it and why? Uh, well, <laughs> I've kind of thought about this before, like, especially in regards to, like, showing my own artwork. Not that I'd show my own artwork there, obviously, but, like, I would love to see a show that's just wholly based on, like, you know, Aboriginal timelines. Like, I'm really interested in the topic and I think I would love to see more histories through paintings and I'd love to be able to see especially like unique pieces that were actually from the past I know it occurs frequently throughout many galleries I went to one up in Darwin recently when I went up there for a holiday um, I went and saw beautiful cave paintings and uh, Holt Telstra Aboriginal art show which was at one of the museums and was absolutely gorgeous but I haven't seen just Aboriginal timeline art all together in one place, I think, ever. So I'd really like to see something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that is a really good point, um, considering that, like, again, like I said before, our culture is very creatively based. We create art through any form realistically so it'd it'd really be such a really culturally nourishing kind of um sorry my train of thought kind of died it'd be really like culturally nourishing um way to see all of that and really delve into our history um kind of related to that april let's move on to you um what kind of like the same question um if you were to create an art show what would you like to be in there and why so 
I love this question, Angel. So I really am thinking about this idea of making space. And I feel like artworks created by young people are really underrepresented in national galleries. So I would like to curate an exhibition, which is all works created by young people. And because I love digital arts, I would love for it to be a digital art exhibition. So I'm really super lucky to be working with uh, the digital lab in Robin with Big Art. So I get to work with young people and mentor them to create digital artworks. So because I know those artists so well, I might, yeah, think about including some of those works and see if we can get them into a national institution. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, I think there's one more question. Oh, Cooper's back, I believe. Um, here we are. So um, a question for you, Cooper. If you were to create an art show, what would you want to see and why? Um, sorry about that. I just dropped out. Um, I'd, I'd probably want to see um, more, more in-depth um, personal stories about somebody's somebody's um, history or their life, um, just based more about them and personal matters in, in their art. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Because we, I think art holds a lot of history. I think, yeah, when we talk about history, art is always mentioned, um, predominantly anyway. <laughs> so it'd be really cool to see someone's personal story as a history and everything. Um, I believe there's one more question. Um, so when it comes to, this is something similar to, um, related to April. Um, when it comes to trying to get young people into like big art galleries and everything, what would the process be like? And would there be a way to make art galleries more or less intimidating? Wow, that's a great question. I, I am really a kind of like ambassador for young people. So I really like to, to share the artworks that young people make. So, oh my gosh, please send them to me and I'll pass them along. I think that making professional networks is really important, probably in most careers, but definitely in the visual arts. So make those curators your like new BFF and really get to know what kind of work they've been, you know, putting together in their shows recently and, you know, reach out to them. Often you can find contact details for institutions and you can even let curators know what you've liked about exhibitions that they've put together. They really like to, to hear how it's been received by audiences. And I think... I feel intimidated going into big national galleries like this sometimes, but I think that you need to remember that national collections belong to everyone. So it's a little bit of a mindset thing where you've got to remind yourself that actually this collection is also mine. So I need to find ways that I can access it. And if I feel like I can't access it, then you need to let that gallery know. Yeah, absolutely. That's correct. Um, I had a mind blank again. Anyway, um, we. <laughs> so for the audience, if you're inspired by that, and if you, if any of the young artists out there watching this, if you would want to um, work towards getting your art in a gallery, as April said, look for people like her, like ambassadors, and send your artworks their way, and hopefully you know, sometime in the future, your artworks will be in the art galleries and we can make a change for younger artists like us to hopefully be represent represented as well and have our voices heard. Um, so hopefully you, you've learned something today in today's live stream. I'm very, I'd like to give a very big um, thank you to everyone, Georgia, Cooper, everyone behind the AIM um, show right now. It's such a great opportunity to have all of you here. And um, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your thoughts and making space. The power of art is to create change. Oh, and thank you so much, April, as well, for all of your knowledge and everything. It's such a beautiful um, way to just really connect with our younger artists and the history of art as well.
Um, so yeah, I think that'll wrap up today's um, live, today's show. Thank you so much again for everyone being on the show and everything. And thank you so much for the opportunity.